What's up everyone, Jake here, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna cover potentially one of the most important investing principles that everyone needs to know. And you're just not gonna learn good finance and investing principles in school. I think it's a rich dad, poor dad quote that goes, when you go to school, you learn how to work for money, not make your money work for you. And when we think about long-term versus short-term investing, long-term investing has the advantage. The reason why is because with active trading or short-term investing, the more decisions you have to make, the, the more likely it is you're going to make a huge mistake that could wipe out a lot of good smaller, uh, smaller decisions. So Warren Buffett likes to say the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. Now, what is the advantage to a long-term investor who is patient? And it is compound interest. Here's a quote from Albert Einstein, pretty smart guy. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. That's what I want to get across in this video. I'm sure everybody has heard of compound interest. But once you finally understand the math, you can't, you can't see debt the same. When you're paying consumer debts on a credit card, car loan, student loan, not only are you losing money and going negative, uh, but you're not investing and you're not going positive. So compound interest, also sometimes called compound growth when investing, this is the process of receiving interest on already received interest, and it leads to exponential growth. And I feel like the human mind kind of struggles with the concept of exponential growth. We think in linear terms. So let's do an exaggerated example here. And let's say you were to invest $100 and it was capable of getting a 20% return. So year zero, you start with $100. Year one, it's a 20% gain. That makes sense, you're earning 20%. However, year two, you're at 144. You're now at a 44% gain, not 40%. Year three, you're at a 72.8% gain, not 60. Year 10, you're at a 520% gain, not 200%. So if you're a long-term passive buy and hold investor, make a game plan and stick to it. I think Warren Buffett likes to say about individual stock picking, if you could, if the New York Stock Exchange were to close tomorrow and wouldn't reopen for 10 years, where would you want your money to be? If you are investing in a 401k, TSP, 403b, IRA, any of these deferred taxed accounts, what is your 30-year game plan? This is money you're gonna be using decades in the future. Pretend the New York Stock Exchange were to close down for 30 years. Where would you want your money to give you the best, uh, the best opportunity and the best advantage to retire securely? And truly, investing is a marathon, not a sprint. If you plan to be alive in 2050, you know, uh, once again, get your, get your ducks in a row and come up with a game plan. What is the best game plan for you? And something to help you understand compound interest and how it works is the rule of 72. This is a pretty cool uh, math trick and I'll explain it really, really simply. Let's assume that you're gonna get a 7% return on your overall investment. At that rate, money doubles every 10.3 years. It's 72 divided by seven. If you think you can get an 8% return per year, money doubles every nine years, 72 divided by eight. At 9%, money doubles every eight years, 72 divided by nine. And at 10%, money doubles every 7.2 years, uh, so 72 divided by 10. So whenever I think about my uh, TSB 401k or IRA balances, I say, okay, what if the worst case scenario happens and I'm no longer able to contribute? Uh, what, what does my money look like? And I just double it every eight years. So in eight years, you would double it. However, in 16 years, you would quadruple what your balance is today. And I always get pushback in the comments section, but the long-term average of the overall market is about 10%. You can Google this. And let's just look at Vanguard's ETFs, ticker symbol VOO. This is Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF. You can buy this for free. Uh, no, tra no, 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 uh, no trade commissions uh, with any you know, free brokerage account, Fidelity, Schwab, uh, Robinhood, whoever. You can buy Vanguard's ETFs. Look at the one-year return, so the last 365 days. It has is, it is yielded 17% in one year. Over the last five years, it has averaged 16% a year. 
Over the last 10 years, it has averaged 13% a year. And since inception, uh, this goes back to 2010, 14% a year. This is obviously pretty high because this does not include the 2008 recession. So let's look at VTI. This is Vanguard's total stock market ETF. These two funds are about 80% the same. Uh, the VTI includes small cap stocks. Year to date, up 20%. Uh, one year average, 20%. Five years, 16% a year. 10 years, 13% a year. Now its long-term average going back to 2001 is only 8%. Uh, this fund was created you know, after the dot-com crash and it also includes the 2008 recession. It didn't capture any of the tremendous growth we experienced in the 90s, but the long-term average with dividends reinvested uh, is 10% a year. So let's use that as our number. Let's say, you know, rule of 72, money's gonna double every 7.2 years. So if you start with a $100 initial investment, after year one, you're up 10%. After year two, you're up 21%, not 20. After year three, you're up 33%, not 30. After year five, you're up 62%, not 50. By year eight, you've gone over 100. You've doubled, so not 80%. But once again, think long term. If you just buy and hold, what can you accomplish? After 20 years, you will be up 572% on that $100 investment, not 200%. Exponential growth and time on your side is incredible. And maybe you don't believe me, maybe you're watching this video and you're saying 572% gain in 20 years, that's not possible. Yes, yes it is. So here is a breakdown of how the S&P 500 has performed by decade. The 2010s just finished. So uh, if you had put you know, an investment in at the beginning of 2010 and held it for 10 years, you'd be up 243%. This was a good decade for the market. However, it wasn't even the best one. In the 90s, up 435%. The 80s, up 376%. The 1950s is the post-World War II boom, obviously up huge, 467%. Now, yes, the 2000 dot, the dot-com crash and the 2008 recession was pretty bad, negative 7% for the decade. It, uh, that's not very good. However, you know, if you put in $1,000 at the beginning of the decade, held it for 10 years, you'd only be down 70 bucks. But if you held it for another decade, a 20-year investing plan, you'd be up huge, 243%. You can also look at the Great Depression of the 1930s. We really didn't uh, recover until World War II started. So when you buy, uh, especially a well-diversified low-cost index fund, if you buy and hold, you will have tremendous gains over a 20, 30, 40-year investing horizon. It's also worth mentioning that it doesn't matter who's in power, whether it's Democrat or Republican, who controls Congress, who controls the White House, it doesn't matter. The S&P 500 goes up over time. Business and economic productivity does its thing. So you can look at the growth during Reagan, the growth during Clinton, the growth during Obama. Technically, Obama, uh, technically Bush did finish below where he started over an eight-year period, but that was the 2008 recession. Ideally, that's not happening, uh, you know, uh, every 10 years. So, yeah, the Great Depression down here was bad, but if you just buy and hold in the long run, doesn't matter the political party, uh, the, uh, the U.S. stock market will keep doing its thing. And it's tough. I know it's tough to put your money in a retirement account every month and say, hey, I'm not going to see you. I'm not going to see you, Ben Franklin, for uh, 20, 30, 40 years, potentially. However, when he comes back to see you, he will bring his friends. Uh, and you'll be thankful that you bought, bought and held and uh, invested today for tremendous growth, compound interest and exponential growth over time. That, that is the long term game plan. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I talk a lot about finance and investing. Any questions or comments, let me know uh, down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.